it's too bright. The May 2021 Doylestown Township Environmental Advisory Council meeting. Welcome to our guests as well as to our members. And isn't it wonderful that we're meeting in a hybrid experience? This is my first hybrid meeting ever. <laughs> Pretty much for joining us um, by Zoom. And thank you to everyone who showed up in person tonight. This is wonderful. So with that said, let's begin with our minutes. I asked, did, did everyone who saw the minutes have a chance to read them? And is there any question or correction? I read the minutes. I did not. They were excellent as always. I did not see any corrections that, that I know of, about. Um, I, I would, I don't know if anybody else does, but if not, I would move to accept the, what do we do? Move to accept the minutes. A second. second. Okay. Okay, and so all in favor, aye. 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 Okay, minutes approved for the April 13th meeting. Thank you, Jim. And budget review. Well, I had one question on that, and I mean, we haven't had a lot of budget activity, but I thought when we purchased tarps for the uh, demo garden, I still don't see that as an expense. Oh, is it not on there? No. Hmm. It, it was about, they were $50 each. Yeah, it was about 150 yeah. It was just I under remember, 100 I remember, that's fine. Yeah, we did. It, it should be on I, there. I don't um, see any uh, indication that that's on here. This is fine. Okay, because we've used them twice already. So I'm not I'll, saying. I'll look into that. Uh, it's fine if they don't want to charge it. But um, <laughs> that was my only question. Okay. 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 Anybody else about the budget? Anybody out there in Zoom land? Okay. Let me move on. New business. Uh, we have a proposal. I have several proposals, four different proposals tonight uh, from different people, and we're going to start with Tara's. Tara is an associate member of the EAC and uh, has an idea about a brochure. And Tara, take it away. Um, well, not not terribly evolved at this point, but we had talked about the possibility of doing some more promotion about EAC. Mm -hmm. So the community knows more about it and that, you know, we were looking for volunteers on an informal basis, not the park partners formal program, but to have more people help with, you know, tree planting and native garden cleaning. And it's, I don't know that many people in Doylestown not having lived here that long, but nobody seems to know that there is a, many people don't seem to know there's an environmental advisory council. So the idea would be for, I guess, at the uh, music on Wednesdays, is it, is it Wednesdays that it happens in the park? Yes. And if the group decides to do a booth at the Doylestown Arts Festival and sell native plants to be able to hand out something so more people know that it's a resource. And um, so that, that's basically the idea. I mean, we'd have to think about, you know, what we want included in it. Um, Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. But you know, getting them printed can be done in a small batch, and you know, prepared in time. I don't know when the concerts start. Might be a little short time to get that done if they start any time in the next month. But you know, to have a few nice images and just a basic background and some contact information. Um, start June sixteenth. Oh. Yeah. Sure. We we have we in the past we've had material, a lot of it was from the Audubon Society, some of it was stuff we created, we had things like, uh, we give out things like uh, uh, milkweed seeds or plants. Uh, we still have milkweed seeds. So, so we, we, do, we do have some things, we have, we, have a, we have a tarp, not a tarp, a uh, banner with our, with our name and logo on it. So, so we have some resources, we, we just obviously didn't do it in the last year because of COVID. But, but I think your idea is a good one, but I think a brochure about EAC itself I think would be a nice compliment to that. And we should think about getting back to some table events, right? Yeah, that's fine. And it, and it doesn't have to be, you know, large. It can be a, a bifold. It could even just be a large postcard, you know, and do a, you know, a postcard type of thing. Something people can take home and, you know, either tack on their refrigerator or keep in their drawer so they know like dates that things happen for tree plantings or how to contact the EAC, et cetera. Yeah, well, we, well, you know, we have, we have, but these meetings are always scheduled, and the work days in the garden are always scheduled, right? That, that's easy. You can plan the whole summer around those those kinds of things. Um, you know, like, and so, um, yeah, I think we should do it. I mean, I think a. Uh, Great idea. What do you guys think? Great idea. You know, we could do that rather quickly. Uh, and 
You know, what I, I, I'm glad we're having this conversation because one thing I forgot to put on the agenda is making sure that we have a, 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 a presence at at least three summer concerts. Okay. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna have to look at those dates. We, we can wait till June to do that. But that might be good because, because they don't start till mid June. Right, anyway. they don't start until mid June. But we do want to have an EAC presence at, at at least three. It was uh, how many are there? About seven or eight uh, concerts? Yeah. Oh no, there's about, probably a dozen. Okay. There, there are quite there, a few. There's this a year. couple of movies then too. But okay. I don't think there's, there's there's also going to be that schedule to put out the newsletter, which should actually go out to all residents within yes. the next week, week and a half. Or so that's the center spread of the newsletter. Um, I will suggest that probably one of the better ones to target is the second concert, because that will be the first one where a beer garden of some sort. The beer incentive. So I think that will have your biggest draw of folks initially. And so that might be a good spot to target in terms of getting out uh, public information. What's the date? 23rd. Okay, 23rd. Okay. So then we will have a presence there on the 23rd. And also the bird number. Yes, and we're we'll oh, yeah, the thing. Right. So yeah. who's got all the materials? I get those boxes. Aaron. Aaron. You have I have a closet full of EAC stuff. Okay. Okay. So but you're forever will, by the way. <laughs> Janine, just one other thing about the brochure. I think it would be helpful to me to just talk with you sometime in the next week so you can help me figure out because I'll need people to write little paragraphs about, you know, sort of their piece of it. And so we can determine, you know, what we're going to include. I, I wouldn't want to be, I don't mind doing the graphics when we put it together in Photoshop for the brochure for printing, but I think having people write what they know best about, about the EAC would be helpful to me and, and to the brochure. I, I, I'm willing to help you with that if you, if you want. Maybe you okay. Offline and talk about content. Okay. And uh, yeah, and then I can refer to you. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Joe. Great. So I'll, okay. I'll contact you after offline or after the meeting. Okay. Okay, so that's I just have one comment. Oh, yes, sir. Sorry. And you have that beautiful brochure that you guys made for the native plants that identifies them. That yeah. Can this be added to that? Because that's something people would want to hold on to that brochure. Sometimes when you get a brochure, you kind of hold on to it a little bit. You say, you know, I, I really don't want this. Or I don't really want to hold on to it longer. The other one has a value if people are interested in plants. At least it has a key of some type on there with mm -hmm. something that makes you want to kind of hold on to. The information itself. I'm not trying to disparage, you know, a pamphlet itself. I'm just trying to uh, people uh, hold on to it. But that was one of the reasons I thought that maybe just doing a larger size postcard where it just had it could like be, you know, yeah. put on a refrigerator rather than going yeah. and it. it would have dates of things that happen. Okay. Or, let's, let's make but we can sort that out. We can sort all of this out. Jen, Carrie, run with it. And okay. then you know, we'll check in, in at our Zoom meeting. We might at least have a mock up. And then, Aaron, you could probably run some off, you know, and we'll have them at the table. So let's let's target that for Zoom. Uh, we'll have a mock up or a sample of something, keeping Marcello's suggestion in mind that maybe there's something on there that's worth keeping. Or the website, the website to get our QR code, you know. Yeah, yeah. So you guys will hammer that out. Okay. So at our June EAC meeting, we'll have something, and then for June 23rd, it'll be available. I'm not sure we'll make it by June 23rd, to be honest with you. Okay. Uh, we might, but by the time we get it through, you know, everybody's input and editing and laying it out and getting it to the printer and back, I think June 23rd is optimistic. Well, we can try. Aaron can, Aaron, can, Aaron can print right now. To we can print extent. house here. Yeah, to some extent, Aaron can get, can get some of that done here. So it's not going to Okay. I'm going to shoot for the 23rd, whether it happens or not, if that's okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Also, I wanted to ask you, uh, Tara, on my agenda, I wrote that you had an idea about turning the uh, some ideas from the tree signs into a possible brochure about trees. But if you don't mind, I'm gonna table that for now. That's fine. Okay, yeah. we have to move on. And I think getting the EAC handout is probably more important at this point. So okay. we'll, we'll revisit that idea. And Carrie, okay. well, I'm gonna have your email address. Um, uh, 
It's very simple. It's my name, Kara, K-A-R-A. -A. Yeah. My last name is Raymond, R-A-Y-M-O-N-D, at Sonic, as in Sonic Boom, S-O-N-I-C dot com. Okay. okay. So thank you both for getting on that. That's going to be a really cool thing to have. I can't wait to have a table event. It's always fun. Okay, guys, moving on. Proposal number two. And has proposed, and we have agreed that we should talk about educational science on the new, on the new trail. <laughs> um, yes, we did talk about that. In fact, Stephanie was the one that suggested that rather than adding science to Central Park, we look outside of Central Park and uh, potentially the new trail, which of course a lot of that borders along the Shannon Creek, not all of it, but because it turns in, inland, so to speak, after a while, but about probably half a mile, I'm going to guess. I'm not great on Oh, I think it's longer than that. Okay. Longer than that. Longer than half a mile. I don't know. I'm not going to that. Um, follow through Nishamni. So it's a, a perfect opportunity to talk about waterways, to talk about uh, the importance of wetlands and uh, riparian living life and stuff. So I just came up with a very rough um, three signs that this is how Tanya and Janine and I have worked on signs before that I just write up stuff as a, as a jumping off point rather than everybody get in the room and you go, so what are we going to put on the sign? Mm -hmm. So it, it's just a, it's a step forward. We may not use any of it. We may use some of it. We may add, we may subtract, whatever. It's probably too much text right now. Um, and I don't do the, I'm not good on the photo part. Um, well, Aaron, we need you. But, okay. Oh, and Heidi, good. So I have, let's talk about watersheds is the first one. It's not in a particular order, I guess, but um, defining what watershed, what is a watershed, wetland versus watershed, and we are all downstream, which I cribbed a lot from that um, resources uh, booklet that you worked on. Riparian flora and fauna is the next one. So what does riparian mean? And then what, why certain plants and animals prefer riparian sites. Uh, keeping our rivers clean. Um, a little bit of background about what you can, um, why, why is good, what's good about flow water? How can you help and why it matters? So that people have hopefully an ownership feeling about the Nishani, um and, and you know, protecting it, protecting it, keeping it clean, keeping it non polluted, keeping it uh, vital for plants and animals. So it's, they're pretty, pretty basic signs. But well, what, uh, do that's you guys think, what do you guys think about having, uh, about considering this? And of course, we're going to have to go through Tamil. So, uh, Aaron, what do you think the process should be? So, I just came out of the uh, Park and Rec Board meeting. Um, in particular, one of the topics of discussion was EAC signs as, as they're going into the parks. Um, and their general consensus was that they want to work in collaboration on building out a plan for the placement of these signs along parks, in parks other than Central Park, and coming up with kind of a comprehensive plan in terms of you know, not not to stymie these these designs at all or anything with these, but it just come up with a more comprehensive overall design of where do we want to put signs and how many and, and kind of get kind of a better framework of moving forward. That's that was kind of their overarching goal that they wanted to work collaboratively with and kind of come to a consensus on. And I, I don't, it, it seems very basic to me. Um, it seems basic that we should be talking. And, about. and they're basically, you know. Um, they wanted to make sure that you know it doesn't just proliferate one area that it can be spread to more of our passive parks and that the, the overall uh, design and wording you know and themes of these these signs can um, maybe there I think their overall thinking was that there would be kind of an overall plan for these signs and overall messaging that was trying to be you know educated. Um, they were not particular about signs outside of just general formatting, which we've been using the um, the two by three format with the metal frames that are painted green. They love those. They like that. Two by three. They are yeah. two by three. There are a few older ones that are bigger, but almost all of our interpretive signs are are uh, the two by three size. Um, 
So that, how do we implement a collaborative approach then? Um, so I think the next step forward um, in terms of this is just kind of talking internally uh, within EAC, finding out um, you know where we want to put you know put signs mm -hmm. and, and kind of the direction that you guys want to go, and you know coming to some very loose you know this is a very long trail like Neiman's trails are very long so you can easily put three signs down there and still have them spaced out quite a bit. And, you know, someone walks through there, you know, they have a couple of spots, but then also incorporating other um, more passive parks um, like Bridge Point or, you know, yeah, Castle Valley is another one. Yeah, um, I, that, as, I as a great that. example. But yeah. I think uh, if EAC comes together as a group and just, you know, I don't think we're looking for anything comprehensive here or they were, which is kind of more of an overall change you know, goal. Yeah. So, well, I know Stephanie did express to me, Stephanie called me, this is the first time anyway. Um, and she did express that she was concerned they were over signing Central Park. Now the tree signs that we've done were replacing old signs that were not suitable. So that it's a net zero on that. So we're not adding signs. Uh, they weren't, they're were going in different Place, hopefully, but I mean, you'd like to see them go in a different place. Right. But, but there were two derelict signs, one on either side of the bridge behind the native plant demonstration garden. Okay. And those are now gone. So there is uh that we would not be adding to, we're just putting better signs in what we thought were better places. But those are suggestions. Right. And yes, you ask for suggestions, you do. And we do, yeah. But if they would like to talk to us, we'd love to talk to them. Yeah. Those particular signs didn't come up in this conversation. Oh, okay. well, so, so it did come from that. Um, but I think it was just coming together with a, a, a more comprehensive plan with, with something they were after. Which sounds appropriate. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's here. a great so idea. Here. Do they have do they have a subcommittee for that or is how no they, they don't at this point? Okay. Because that's how I, often how we work is yes. we have a couple people that are assigned to that. And, and maybe that is what comes out of this. I mean, this was just, just talked about maybe a half hour I heard, ago. I heard, um, I heard. You know, so it's very preliminary. Okay. I totally hear you. That well, one. some of us have made so many signs that we have a pretty good, you know, a pretty good. We um, have a whole production line going. Yeah. Jenny and and I have done them for yeah. years at this point. Yeah. And so if there are maybe two people on Parks and Rec that would like to join us, it would it be okay to have just a meeting with them? Yeah, I can certainly suggest like that. Like four or five people? I can certainly suggest that as a way forward and we can start working on that. Okay. That sounds okay. okay. Do so, they have, this is just a general question because I don't know much about them. Do they have an educational component of what they're trying to accomplish as, as part of their view of parks and, and rec? So they're not necessarily concerned with um, the educational aspect. They actually feel that's a great service that EAC can provide. Um, they want to make sure that it is also balanced across the community in terms of how the parks are utilized. That was more of their concern. Um, and that's particularly why they went out of some of the other parks in, in getting more, you yeah. know, parts of the, the township involved. You know, it, it might not just come to Central Park for, you know, kids' capital or whatever. Okay. Yeah. So we can talk about numbers. We can talk about how many parts we have. You know, should we can we can get all that done in a smaller group. I think it'd be yeah. better. Yeah. 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 So let's let's plan on it. Yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll, and we'll take the range on that. I'll uh, I'll get with Karen and, and I'll start the ball rolling yeah. on that. Okay, great. And just oh. let us let us know. Yeah. Thanks, Aaron. Okay, great. Um, I did on uh Jim's suggestion go out to Castle Valley Park and look at the signage there. Because Jim had mentioned that some of the signage is pretty old and some of it's not readable. You're totally correct on both those counts. It is a very different kind of signage. It's not like what we have here in Central Park. It's a uh, pedestal style. It's more, it's the old fashioned sort of bit board under the little mm -hmm. uh, jingle group mm -hmm. uh, kiosk, I guess, style. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure what you call it. Um, it, I think I suspect they've been up about 20 years going yeah. from the citations within the tax. Mm -hmm. uh, they're, they're they're elderly at this point. Yeah. Yeah. Time, time for refreshment. Yeah, I did not think to take it take a tape measure with me, which was too bad. But I would guess that the signs are two sided, two signs that are two sided, so we have four sides total. So probably about six feet by four and a half, just eyeballing. I, I did not measure, so I don't. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 
quite big. I did take photos, but I couldn't get everything. You can't read it where it's going on. I do have photos, but um, that it looks like what they did was printed on oversized paper that's under glass or plastic part of the glass. Um, mm -hmm. It's not the laminate form that we get from plastic. Um, so that, I mean, I think, I think definitely think they need to be rejuvenated yeah. at the very least. Um, so people that could actually read it. There's a story about why it's called Castle Valley, which yes. I have to say is a little boring. It's more of a non story. Like the historical aspect of it, personally. I mean, kind of the guy so started much. putting rocks at the top of the hill and then died. I don't know that. <laughs> <laughs> it's not for it. Wait, 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 Okay. We'll lay out all these parks. We'll say, okay, these are the ones that should be rejuvenated, like the ones at Castle Valley. We'll go on and get that job done. And let's try, I mean, you know what? The, the proposal was a, a few signs that you even said. I know. That's evolving into something different. It's okay. I know, I know. It but was, I did want to follow up to that. I did go out and look. Um, yes. Was, uh, yes. So we're on a direction. So I thought right. that was a good. And I, I think looking at each of the parks might be a really slow idea. And uh, spread it around. Yeah. yeah. And now, if we wanted to replace the kiosk things with um, the more modern things that we have, yeah, is that something that we could think about as a township? I, I think that's definitely something that EAC can explore. The historical part that might be something we do outside EAC's budget, um, because that's more that's more overreaching. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But I, I think. Changing those in format, especially since they're not reading to the style that's already been used and is identified with our, our signs, I think that is something that is. So easy. we might, we could probably go to the fossil sign. I think that would be yeah. preferable. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I agree. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have right. a plan. That's, that's, that's it's, it a, it's been tweaked. We're going to have more people involved. Parks and Rec can take a good look at the historic aspects of Castle Valley. Maybe that's not our. Maybe that's not our venue, but I mean, not venue. Well, maybe uh, yeah, the Society needs to look at it. Yeah, yeah. Maybe they have more. Maybe they have a better story than that. <laughs> yeah, <it's> like, okay. <laughs> they never built a castle. It's just like, well, oh, okay. okay. Well, thanks. This is going to be good. And anybody else who's interested in working on the signage, let us know. Thank you, Aaron. Get that set up. Maybe by June, we'll have had one week. Yep. You know me, I like to go like this. Okay, so. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So good, thank you. And thank you for the work you've already done. It's preliminary and it will evolve. It, yes, yes. We know it was that. just okay. the first first shot. Yeah. Oh, great. Okay, now we have a guest tonight, Jane Neal. Where are you, Jane? Here she is. And her husband, Eric, is there with her. Hi, guys. Uh, Eric, uh, Jane would like to suggest a project and you have, uh, Jane, you just take it. Tell us what you've already done and tell us what your ideas are. So, uh I have been working with Jean on, Janine on the uh, demo garden for about six years now. And in those six years, I've uh, become a master gardener with Penn State and master steward, master water, master water shed steward, just like Janine, she's my hero. And um, one of the things as we work on the demo garden is that the pond next to it, which I, if anybody doesn't know, I do have photos. Does everybody know the pond next to the demo garden? Sure. Yeah, so um, it, it is overrun too by invasive plants. So I was talking to Janine about it and she said, well, it really does need to be a separate project, not an add on to the demo garden. So um, I went and had a look and you know, try to see what was possible, because one of the problems, I, I shouldn't say problems, one of the good things about the pond is that initially when it was established, uh, uh, you know, well, I don't want to say real plants, but good plants were put there. There's a lot of um, half buried uh, native plants and shrubs that are just being uh, overgrown by the multiflora rose and uh, honeysuckle and 
many other negative plants that we don't want in the area. And uh, the pond is several hundred yards around, but I was uh, thinking of focusing, going back to the signs. Um, there's two signs there. One sign um, is to, if you're standing in the demo garden, it's to the left of the pond. And that is on ponds and watersheds and water, I think a water basin, something like that. And then you walk around to the other side and there's a sign on invasives. And really the signs are, are not benefited by what is going on in that pond. So I uh, spoke to the person who leads Bucks County's master, master watershed uh, team. And she's very excited about the plan as something that we could do together where the master watershed people would actually come in as a project because, um, the, you know, from their perspective, it is central. So all the people in Bucks County looking for volunteer hours, of which there are many right now, especially with COVID, would be able to uh, get there. It has many educational features. The master gardeners are already uh, involved with the demo gardener. Uh, demo garden. So it's actually, you know, the synergy, I hate that word, but the synergy between the two would be really good on this one. Um, I see no actual cost. I think the plants are really there already. We just need to um, unveil them. Uh, the other thing is if we do end up deciding we want to put some plants in, we have plenty from the demo garden that we could move over there if, you know, we wanted to just expand but I, I'm not seeing that. I think we just need to let what is there flourish. Um, I believe it will take a few sessions of um, master watershed people going in there and clearing out what's going on. And then we can then make an assessment of what actually is there. And then finally, um, it, part of that assessment is making sure there is no knotweed. It is in the area. Um, we want to make sure it doesn't get into that pond and I don't see any but who knows it could be there but the other thing that's there that we want to look at is the phragmites and see if we can do something about that before it gets any worse um, and there are met various methods of dealing with it and I think going back and deciding what method we want to use is something that you know maybe the more watershed people can come up with a plan for the township to agree to because you know, one of them, which is setting it afire, I didn't think anybody would be interested in, in, that, of our, in that environment, but there are less, uh, less um, what, right. sensational right. methods of doing it. Mm -hmm. So it, you, I'm not sure whether we would do it at the same time as the demo garden hours, different hours in the evenings. I think I would go back if we got the you know, preliminary or even you know, approved as an idea, I could then go back to, um, the master watershed people and and see about getting up a, a sign up list or a um, you know what do they call it one of those sign up geniuses to see what what time people are interested in doing. That's, so what we have to do, Jane, is see if the township is is uh, is interested. Yep. In, in in this idea, I I know that you and I have talked a little bit, uh, not mm -hmm. much yet. But uh, this is the right place to bring this idea. What do you guys think? And Aaron, you, you're our advisor. Um, how, what is the process? Jane has cleared this with Penn State Extension if, if, if it can evolve into a real project. What about the township's role? And what is the process to get it rolling? So in general, I think there isn't a lot to hold this project back. Um, from the township side, um, especially as there is very limited cost, which you, you noted that most of the plants are already in place. Um, and it is simply a, you know, a, a larger project of culling you know, the invasives that are in the area. Um, I need to talk to, to Karen um, as a first step to uh, see her thinking. Um, from previous conversations talking to her, I don't don't anticipate that being an issue um, with going forward with a project like this. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I'd ask you for, you know, give me a day or two, talk to Karen and, you know, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll let you know. Okay. So can we okay. just, so are you saying that we don't need any, any township uh, staff 
in assistance with this? We could all do it with all volunteers. Is that is that what you're saying? I'm thinking um, the only area I would see where we might, I, I, and again, this is something we have to discuss, but Paul, we're going to have, you know, some detrius left at the end of it. For instance, you know, um, Chris comes by and picks up, um, you know, when we do the demo garden, they, we clear a lot, but he will also clear something. So there may be some of that multi-flora rose, you know, we probably do want it cleared from the area. And if Chris maybe would clear that, so we would tell him the days we we're working so they would know, but I think they're doing that anyway. Um, well, and what Chris usually does is to bring the trailer. And, you know, now we have these beautiful tarps. It would be a similar process. Yeah. You know? The trailer is there, we have the tarps, we clear out the multiflora, you know. And put it on it. Okay. But, you know, that would be yeah. the process. It doesn't really require Chris or his staff to do anything except bring the trailer and then haul it away. Perfect. Yeah, I wasn't quite, I, I knew that, I wasn't quite sure who brought that trailer. So that's, but there are actually methods where you cut back the multiflora, but you leave it in place and it actually becomes a cage over plant and then the the natives can then thrive underneath with the protection um, of the multiflora. By the time they truly die back, the plant is um, doing really well underneath. But we'd have to see what was going on underneath. And I thought, you know, maybe we just try that in an area to see how that works. I, so, I think the first step is going to be an assessment. Exactly. And after the assessment, then a plan. Exactly. Uh, we're not going to just go in there and right. do anything without a plan. So, no. um, yeah. I, I, I don't want to say part of resources too, because it is a pretty big area. Yeah. It's well, pretty that, big area. Uh, uh, yeah, um, Jim, that was why I said just between the two signs, you know, let's just start there because it complements the demo garden. Oh, I understand what you're saying. Okay. Yeah. yeah. No, okay, yeah, and if we find that it goes well and everybody's in, you know, then we move, we expand maybe the next third and then the next third. But yeah, I, I just wanted to limit it for the first year just to see what was there. And that's the area most people are walking on to see. And it, it, it goes back to the signs. That if, if, if 20 water stewards show up, then we will have plenty of willing hands, willing and trained hands to okay. take as much as much yeah. as can be, um, as much as would be good to do. Right. Yeah, it could really make a difference because, I mean, one of the problems there is also calorie care. The calorie care uh, is, is a real issue. And although our, our, our parks staff sometimes can do a little bit of that invasive removal, it is, it's a bear. This could be such a win-win. The township would win, National Watershed would win, the environment wins. So uh, I would like to encourage this. If, that, if everybody agrees, it looks like Jane, you've got the support of EAC. You want a motion, Jane? Uh, Jane? Do we need one? Erin, do we need, do we need uh, to have a formal uh, recommendation on this? Oh, um, I think that once we get a, you know a um, an overview and a site assessment, I think bring the site assessment back, and we can bring the townships input back and I think we can then move forward with the you know a motion at that point. Okay. So so Jane can um, we do a motion pending or sure. Okay. okay. I would propose a motion pending the material the township information that we need, site assessment, etc. that we go ahead with this project with the meeting. With master watershed and what, master watershed stewards. Yes. Um, so and water master gardeners if they're willing to jump in too. Yeah, well, this would be, I think what one of the things Jane is, is doing is, is opening up the opportunity for watershed stewards okay. to okay. get more volunteer time. Because of the, because of pandemic, it's been really hard. Uh, yeah. You know, mess, and that's why we have so many master gardeners coming out to the demonstration garden. Yeah. Because yeah. everybody needs volunteer hours. Yeah. You know? And it, it is, it's a great thing. But I hate to wait a month to... So move it forward. Yeah. Okay, let's, let's, let's wait until we have. Yeah. Unless should we should we go with the motion pending? Can we do it with the pending? Yeah, I think that's reasonable. Okay, so wait, is there a second? Second, second? Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Yes. Yes. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. And we do have a form. So. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you, Jane. I think we're on to something. Great. So, what do you need from me next, then? I think you have to wait to hear from.
from Aaron and me. Okay. All right, great. Okay, I will wait to hear from you. Could and Janine, you've got, you, you'll give him my contact information. All right, okay. All right perfect. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay, great, thank you, Jane. Thank you, Eric. Okay, moving on. We have um, we have a, we have an idea, uh, and maybe this can't happen. I mean, we're doing so many other things. I don't know if this can happen, but the, okay. the final item on tonight's agenda under new business is a proposal to collaborate with Buffs Beautiful to create a Native American garden at the rock, at the amphitheater. There's a rock and it has an inscription about the Lenny Lenape. Right. And it is, it's never been developed. There has been discussion of turning it into a Native, a Native American garden. Um, we've talked about the fact that Churchville Nature Center has done all, of, all the homework for us. They have an extensive list of plants used by the Lenny Lenape in our area. And it could happen, but maybe, maybe we're getting ahead of ourselves. I think we have so much going on that maybe we're getting ahead of ourselves. However, Bucks Beautiful has some money. Maybe. They, they will donate all the plants. They will donate the plants. And so this is, you know, we're talking about watershed stewards doing the basis. We're expanding the native plant garden. And this would be a separate project. Right. But Bucks Beautiful has said they will donate the plants. They did. Um, and they may have the, she's going to look. She has not contacted me again. But to me, I did talk to Denise Feedback, who's the big honcho at Bucks Beautiful, which I always call BB. So if I say that, that's not. But she's about. also a massive garden. She is and has been for a long, a long, long time. time. Um, I worked with her in Massa. I never worked with her in Massa Gardner. I've only worked with her since like this. It was so yeah, weird. Right? I never worked with her at all. Um, but she said, yes, she will look. She thinks that she still has the planting plan. Bucks Beautiful would very much be able to donate all the plant plants. I'll get it out. Uh, we would need to supply the site preparation there was a lot of talk initially. This one came up, I think it's been five years now. We've been talking about it a, long, a long, long time. Um, to fence it, because even though there's a sign to not put your kids up on the Indian rock, all the parents put kids up on the Indian rock. So if, if they're gonna do that, they're gonna trample the garden. So we need to fence it. And I think that was the sticking point with the township. Uh, so this is where I would have to turn it over to you, Aaron, and probably Dave Tomko, I would think, for our, 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 our Karen. And Karen. This would be more Karen's wheelhouse, and that is absolutely the sticking point. Yeah. Um, Karen is very pessimistic about the possibility of doing the planting there that will make it because of people's um, resiliency to keep putting their kids up. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. It's very. Do we feel about the need of having a Native American type tree down from shrubbery? Nothing, nothing delicate like perennials or anything that leaves some shrubs and trees. That's an idea. There's an artifact that goes with that. Um, that somewhere in the township building. Mm -hmm. Okay, the trees, trees and shrubs that might be the problem. Yeah, that's true. Sure. Maybe that's an idea. Pick some free trees and couple shrubs. Okay, that might be a way to go. I think um, keeping that in mind and coming up with a solid plan that speaks to the concerns mm -hmm. of people pretty much ignoring whatever we put out right there. Yeah, well, and the other yeah. concern that Denise had because she walks her dog over here is that every dog feeds on that rock. She said literally every dog feeds on that rock. As soon as one dog does, and they all do. No, that's certainly true. Yeah. Yeah. So what that's about, another concern with a more more fragile plants. So maybe maybe that, this is a good way to think about um, doing shrubs and then trees or something behind. But we're going to have to probably live with the idea that people are going to walk to the rock to stick their kid on top, even though it's like something. Place it behind the rock, you know, just as a framing of the rock. Maybe that. Yeah. Now the rock itself is just from the quarry. It has nothing to do with the land of Lenape, other than the, the quarry owner thought that it was a nice way on. I have I have uh, one outrageous thought. Good. That is to move the rock. 
Well, not that idea. We could move it up. Well, that by time. <laughs> I mean, it's a possibility. Right? I think that's a great idea. The rock is kind of a feature of Central Park. It, it is. is. It? That's, I think so. Yeah, okay. Well, I, 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 I think it very much is. I mean, I think people will people will notice this. They, they All right. Like, yeah. That's my, my personal thing. I, I like that though. That's mm -hmm. thinking outside the box. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know what? I didn't know it was such an important feature of the park. Well, well, would it be possible to move the garden over to the amphitheater and just direct people say, "This is a you know, why not do the Native American garden over by the amphitheater?" We could do that. It's more expanded area about Native American. Yeah, and uh, we need Karen. We still need Karen to go at least ask for that. For mm -hmm. many years now, she wants the garden there, but then she won't tell me what. But you can't have it here because the band bus parked there. You can't have it. So I said, Great, sketch it out where you want it. Never got it. So, okay. um, do we have here. Native Americans that are bought into this idea? I mean, I... That would be really awesome because there certainly are one in Anache here. Yeah. Uh, most of them live in Anache. And I, I would hate for us to rep represent them. I agree. That's true. I agree. That was Tanya's concern last time we talked about this. Yeah, this has been yeah. on the table for a long time. Um, was very concerned about that. And hey, so everyone. It's Nancy Santos Asley. I'm uh, visiting a supervisor, and I'm totally enjoying your enthusiasm and conversation. Um, just a thought. I've always thought it would be great to have, just like different cities have a place to take their picture. Maybe you can use that rock as sort of a place where people create something where people go to get their picture taken in front of it, and they tag you on Instagram and Facebook, and then it becomes more of an iconic thing of the park. And people start to realize you want to stand a certain place to get your picture taken. Just an idea, but um, just just it was just a thought. But I always thought it'd be neat to have a place where people could go and you know get their pits taken, their picture every year. You know, as it goes through. They go to take their kids to the park in the summer or whatever it is. So yeah, I, I think I think it almost is that already because I think that's why that's why kids love to climb on the rock for exactly that reason. So I, I think it's I think we're already halfway there. So I, I like that idea. Just some way to maybe embellish it to make mm -hmm. it like I always think of Nashville, all they have like those wings and people get their picture taken in front of it. Maybe there's something you could do with that rock to combine that so well there's for letting me listen. Stuff on the background so that's it does present a, a pretty good photo opportunity so maybe actually it's an asset or an advantage that kids climb on that rock that, that's not that's not what it's <laughs> well where to go from well then i don't think we should put a garden under it oh well, well, well maybe you can put so unless we do that right so we like shrub right right yeah. Okay, yeah. so let's 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 have let's proceed. I'll do that path, Denise. Though. So, so Aaron, you're going to check yeah. out with Karen. Yep. Anne's going to talk to Denise. Yep. And we'll put it on the agenda again. Again. But we should also, but to follow up on Kurt's point, though, if there is a Native American community that has some some thoughts about this, mm -hmm. we should probably talk. To them. There's a Native from a Native from. David America at the museum up at Allen John. I just visited them and they would be good people to talk to. If I can get the number for you. Yeah, which one's going to be Okay, so we're going to get back to that in June. Cool ideas, everybody. You know, we're on to something where it could it could evolve again, something that could evolve into something better than what is. And that's what we're about. Okay, great. So let's try to get, let, let's going to check the time. Okay, it is now. Okay, I'm going on eight. We're going to finish by 8 30, okay? All right. So we're going to rush a little bit. We might not, but we're going to try. Okay. All right. Ongoing business subcommittees. ASC letter to board of supervisors about the new election. Jim, did you have any follow up about that? Yes. So uh, we, okay. So since the last meeting, I got some feedback from Stephanie that she thought some of the wording was not factually correct. And he's there. So I modified the letter slightly, uh, basically made it shorter, um, submitted it. Uh, I know that the Board of Supervisors read it. Uh, it, it apparently came up at the last uh, Board of Supervisors meeting. And I got a letter um, from Stephanie saying that this, the topic of the Rec Center would come up again at the June 12th, or 15th, June 15th, June 15th, Board of Supervisors meeting, uh, because there's going to be a number of proposals about what they will do with the building. Um, and so I don't want to get ahead of that conversation, but I guess they're rethinking the location of it. That, that, that particular site may turn out to be very expensive. And they yeah, to, to give an overview of where we're at with that project, 
Uh, you're exactly right, Jim. There's a lot of concern about the cost for that specific site and uh, the cost of having uh, a gymnasium as well as part of it as we get further into the design process. So there's discussion now um, about the next steps. We will have a presentation from the architects we've contracted about several different options that they're going to present for us. Um, I don't know what all the options are. Um, Barbara Lyons laid out a few of the options for us at the last meeting uh, and a number of them centered around moving the project to where the tennis courts and basketball courts are now and trying to tie that into the current administrative campus we have and uh, possibly building it in such a way to expand on it later instead of doing it all in one fell swoop. So there's lots of discussions going on about that. And I can, if we have it on the agenda, I will make sure to update you guys at the next EAC meeting after the board of supervisors meeting, or you can always watch the meeting yourself. Oh, you know, I, I intend to be, I'll, I'll, I'll certainly attend that meeting. Yeah, yeah. Board of supervisors will be after our meeting. It is after our next yes. EAC meeting. Yes. Um, Dan, I have to ask this. Nancy, I have to ask this. Has there been any discussion about sustainable building practices? I do not know that. I know it has been recommended uh, by several groups, but I have I personally have not seen the some of the proposals that have come back yet. Uh, the fifteenth will be the first I'm seeing some of the um, the proposals from the architects. I think um, I'm still going through some of the notes that we're getting from all the pre-construction meetings and conversations. I think everything's on the table. They're more than aware of the importance of um, lead practices um, and, 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 that, and that desire. Um, it's also incredibly expensive. And I think COVID has driven up the construction prices considerably. Mm -hmm. So I think they're still just flushing everything out, but it absolutely has been um, discussed in terms of it's something they wanna look into. I don't know how everything will fall out though. So yeah. uh, just, you know, that, that part that I understand where they're talking about, where there's these big waste piles in the part, that's fairly environmentally sensitive compared to the tennis course, for instance, in which, you know, you're not cutting down any old growth forest to, right. to put it in a tennis course place. So, I mean, I hope there's some question or there's some consideration of the environmental sensitivity of that area. Yeah, and it wasn't my understanding. It was it was going to be more where the soccer fields currently are, not so much on where any trees are. Which you know, it's still close to that area. I understand where you're coming from. Yeah, but that's that's considerably yeah. better. That's no great loss compared to cutting down Hart's Woods to make this thing. Yeah, yeah. obviously, we will. Never, never, it was never. It was never going to be. I think in Hart's Woods, but no, no, we'll but, uh, but still, I, I agree. I think it, it's, it's in my opinion, it would be better closer to the existing home. Yeah. But uh, yeah, the, the general the general thing I think Nancy and I are getting at is a lot of this is still very early, continues to be kind of information gathering and exact figuring out what do we want to do and what can we afford, and it's just kind of like laying out options based off uh, the feedback we we are getting from the community and that we've been inputting with the the architects. Right, like I would say probably where the community needs has been asking for a gymnasium. Um, and also trying to identify what our programs are and then also the environmental needs and, and listening to all our committees who've spent a lot of time and, um, and a lot of input uh, to the supervisors in terms of their concerns um, for the you know, Ways and Means, Park and Rec, as well as EAC. So um, it, it, we're, we're anxious to see what they can flush out getting all this information and um, putting mm -hmm. some type of proposals together for us. So we're, we're all waiting. For Don't forget this homegrown talent here. This is, there's, some, there's some talent here that could also give you some suggestions, some advice. Just don't forget about us, please, as this goes forward. Thank you. Oh, Janine, you know I never forget about this group. I know you don't. <laughs> I'm always impressed with this group, actually. That's why I had to come tonight. Great. Um, Thanks, Nancy. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. We'll hear more about this in June. Uh, actually, maybe a little bit more, but then it will be July when we really hear more. Okay, all right, thanks everybody for that.
Um, next on the, on the agenda, proposal for county fleet and yard waste pickup. I call Mullen is not present tonight. And is there no. anything to say? I did contact her because I knew Ways and Means had um, met. Um, and I said, what was the option? And could you like give me something to talk about at EAC? And she said, oh, Ways and Means was all for it. They want to take it to the Board of Supervisors, assuming that EAC signs on. I'll shoot you an email tonight or tomorrow. And that was a week ago. Okay. I have nothing. So I don't know. She's running for supervisor. So I think she's. I would carry that result. for the next meeting. That was not the impression I got from Ways and Means. Okay. okay. That's interesting. Um, well, I think they have I, to place it out. And I think Colleen got her um, COVID shot and wasn't feeling too hot from what I heard. No, she is under okay. the weather because of her COVID shot. My okay. belief was that Ways and Means had questions about cost. Okay, that I'm just telling you the feedback I had from Colleen. Yep. Okay, I don't have anything for her. Yeah, so I think we wait for her to come back and report. Yeah. I, I think, think that's, that's the best yeah. We'll put it on it for Zoom. We'll just move it to Zoom. Yeah, um, I, this, this lease project is weird because I've actually not ever, I would never use this, this service, but um, I had a whole other thing in mind, but she was caught on this, so I'm okay. gonna go with this well, right now. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll put it on the agenda and hope that something more can be said. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay, great. Thank you. The pesticide brochure. This is Heidi and Mel, and I'm attending those meetings as well. Heidi, take it. Okay, so our last meeting, um, we kind of changed a little bit of your focusing before, a little bit more on health and habitat. And we changed more towards more focusing on how children and pets, pets are affected by pesticides. So I put a mock up together. Um, I put some material in that we um, Mel was sharing with us from non toxic communities and beyond pesticides. Um, and I just wanted to pass it around and get some ideas of what you guys think about. It's very much a rough draft, um, but it's a, just want to see if you guys are okay with the direction that we're going in. Um, but it includes the beginning, just like a little opening statement, what pesticides are, and then how they um, harm health, um, how they are outside, what they, how they contribute to disease, how they're toxic to children and pets, and then what you can do to help. And that's some great resources and references as well. So Maybe I'm just going to Pass this around. Um, I have seen it. Oh, I should just have to. No, no, we're going to just focus on the impact. Okay. It's, 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 it's one little brochure, so it's a good starting place. I think you were thinking about, you know, talking about birds and bees and so on, but really just felt like this would get people more attention. Like if you had a, a table of you're more like a picked this up, if you see it this way, then if you see bees and hogs. Gotcha. Because a lot of people want bees to be sprayed on the field in the first place. And so this way it's explaining why um, that may not be such a good idea actually how to impact the children. Very good. Uh, so so this, this brochure is intended as a handout at the table of events exactly. similar to the right. I'll be on put the on our website as well people can refer to it. Sure. I think I think that um, especially considering um, some conversations we're having about um, about input and about public versus private land. And about how township parks are used by thousands of people. We're going to have to tread lightly on this. We, 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 uh, even though some of us might want to tread more heavily, we are going to have to tread lightly because, as Aaron has made it very clear just tonight to some of us. We have a responsibility to so many different people with so many different ideas about the use of, of public parks in this township that whatever we put in, in our pesticide brochure is going to have to be balanced. It's, it, it's going to have to be. And I think that addressing issues around children and pets is a good beginning to that balance. We are, we are not going to win a battle that says no pesticides anywhere on public land. We're not going to win that battle. But what we can do is encourage parents and pet owners to reduce pesticide use on their, on their property. It's also just a general education. It's education about what these chemicals are and what they can do to you. So I mean, you can take that information and pull from that. So. Yes. But we're going to have to keep in mind that we are we are representing the township. Yes. Jenny, can I ask can I ask something? Is there is there anybody that is pro pesticide? Uh, yes. Yeah. As a matter of fact, my neighbor. Also, the the athletic associations that use our public parks 
are very much afraid of, of stinging insects, for example. So, I mean, and we know that there may be better, there may be better things to do than out and out pesticide. There are organic materials that might be used instead. So the answer to your question, Eric, is yes, there are people who are pro-pesticide. But what we hope this brochure might do is introduce people to the idea that there are alternatives. Does that make sense? It does, but the town, so we're talking about the township property or the brochure is aimed at homeowners? It, 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 we, can't, we can't tell the township what to do and what not to do. We can't do that. We can advise, but what we can do is create a brochure that we hope will reduce the, 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 the use of pesticides right. and, and also educate people about the dangers. So it's meant for residents. It's a, the purpose of it is for educators. I was going to say, I thought the brochure was meant for residents. I, I don't know why yes. we have to be concerned about what the township thinks about it. This is for people's personal property, is it not? Just for their own? Yes, but we are advising the town township commission. We have to understand, we have to stay in our lane. And our lane is advisory to residents, but also to the Board of Supervisors, which makes it different from only talking to residents. That's my understanding. Yeah. Help, me, help me if yeah. I just said something wrong. Right. But, We're just to educate residents. Yeah, educating residents, but under the umbrella of, of advising the township, which means including township officials. That's, that's where we are. That's who we are. I guess I'm failing to understand what the conflict is. If we're preparing a brochure for people for their personal property to understand the use and alternatives to pesticides, we're not telling the township what to do on public land. We're just telling people for their personal residents what their option, educating them and what their options are. So I, I'm struggling to understand what the conflict actually is because we're not telling the township what to do. There's no, There's no conflict. There's no conflict. We all agree. Somebody else take the ball and say it. Yeah, no. Can, no, can I? Can I say something? Yes, please. This is Mel. So, um, from what I under I understand, the the athletic fields and are being sprayed with Escalade and Barricade, um, one of which Escalade has two um, four D in it which is very, very dangerous. Um, and so in the, in the copy that we have for the brochure as it stands now, um, there is a part in that brochure that talks about um, 2,4-D and the 2,4-D is being sprayed on the field. And it feels to me out of integrity to be advising people um, to not use a particular pesticide that is actually being sprayed on the fields. And it's, I don't know this for certain, but I have a pretty, pretty good idea that parents don't know um, what is being sprayed on the fields. I have pictures of prepubescent girls sitting on the soccer field you know, 10 days, two weeks after, after it was sprayed. So that, that's my, my conflict is making a brochure that advises, advises against something, but then you're, you're doing it yourself. So that's, that's my, my conflict. Thank you, Mel, because I think that answers Kara's question. What, where's the conflict? And that may be it. Well, who is who is making the decision to spray the athletic fields with pesticides right now in Doylestown Township? Who, who's the actual person that's saying? I mean, it's not Chris. Is it Chris? It's this, no, the, no. This, mm -hmm. hey, this is not new, first of all. Right. And, and perhaps Aaron, can you? No, this is not a new practice. Uh, the township currently does treat our athletic fields as part of our agreements with the athletic associations that use it. We don't spray in the remainder of the park. Um, if you go out and look at our parks, one of the easiest ways to differentiate this by, you know, dandelions right now 
if you go by a park, you see a bunch of dandelions, that's not being treated whatsoever. But a lot of the athletic associations expect a certain um, field condition will limit themselves against liability and increase um, playability on the fields. And that has been a long-standing practice within the township uh, mm -hmm. preceding me by quite some bit. Um, yeah. and, and that is a decision that has, has been made by, you know, uh, the township as, as a whole. There isn't just one particular person making this decision. Is there any chance we could review that or have that under discussion? I mean, does the presence of dandelions really make a difference to a 10-year-old soccer player? No, that's not it. It's it's about uh, I I I I've, I've, I've learned a couple of things. I'm not an expert on this at all. I know so little. But what I've learned from serving on on this advisory council is the fact that the township has athletic associations with whom they have agreements, mm -hmm. their contracts, that contracts. Right. And money exchanges hands. Exactly, it's a revenue stream. All right, stream. money exchanges hands, and and those contracts include the playability, to use Aaron's word, and and the safety, and I'm putting that in quotation marks, of those playing fields. That is, I'm afraid, beyond our maybe beyond our our, our even our ability to make any changes. So I think, uh, right. just, uh, Eric, I just want to say this. The reason why we're doing this brochure is in, to educate parents. So once they get those brochures in their hands, then they have the information, then they can go to the athletic associations and say, we want to discuss this with the association, okay? Mm -hmm. And then they in turn can then talk to the township. Mm -hmm. This is the means of educating the public about pesticides, what their children are playing on, and then hopefully from that stream, from that, those conversations, things will change. I realize that's a segue. I realize it's that's a side that's not directly relevant to this uh, brochure. So uh, we can bring that up another time, I guess. It's a process. It's a yeah. process of educating the public so in turn they can start asking questions about their athletic fields and, and what their children are playing on and then in turn talk to the township. Right. right. So that's the best way things are done. It's a process. A red chair and hit a button and say, I believe in you enough to say I want to help you in any way I can. And that's a, a cool But I believe I, I guess all of us here think that's pretty much crazy sauce that they're, <laughs> that they're spreading this poison on this grass regardless of what the contracts and all we can talk about this another time absolutely absolutely one, one, one other point though um there, there are claims in there which are um could very deeply concerning deeply mm -hmm. concerning i think they need to be reckoned there needs to be some source of where this information is taken from because i think yes. Okay. Back, so the references are included here, and this is all um, um, scientific um, okay. articles. Okay. As, long, as long as it's links to, 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 to um, uh, okay. reputable so, sources of information. Yeah, absolutely. John is looking at this as all scientific okay. articles okay. of inverted. Yeah, so it's, it's legitimate information. Can I just so, add one more thing, possibly? Yes, one more. So real quickly, I apologize. I won't uh, take too much time. I don't know if it's possible with the contract that you currently have with the vendor, whoever does the treatment of the lawns, wouldn't it be a great to have an analysis where you have, you know, a chemically treated lawn, the pre-existing one, and an organically treated area, soccer field or whatever, and have a side-by-side, -side, you know, yes. see if it's a viable solution and, and see if people go, if it affects the playability, the safety, and all the concerns that you mentioned earlier, but I don't know if it's something, is, it's easy to say, but I don't think if it's something they actually do, because I believe they just signed a contract with a vendor and the vendor just takes over the parcel. So I don't know how you'd have to have subcontract within that. That seems like a little bit of a complication, but if somehow they could set that up to have those two adjacent fields, you know, you can make a realistic, you know, like, look, this is what, this is option A, this is option B. Let's make an edu educated decision based on what we're looking at right now. Yeah. That's, that's easy to do. That's a great idea because that also would be an educational thing to show um, residents that this is what you should do at home as well. This is what- right. Chemicals versus organic. So that would be something to talk about with the township of choosing an area maybe that we could do that. It's, it's one thing to kind of say, shame, you can't do that. You have to offer a solution as well. You have to give them an option to say, well, this is bad. Well, this is our only, this is where our education has taken us so far. This is what we know works. And so even then, you know, I, again, I don't think a vendor is going to be pro pesticide. It's a cost to them. So if you, if you talk to them about ways that they could fulfill this contract of having a playable field, without that added cost of buying pesticides and the labor costs of spreading it, 
I don't know why they wouldn't be open to that. So I think if you take a healthy organic approach to lawn maintenance, you'll have a thick lawn. It'll naturally uh, reduce the amount of weeds. But what you can do, which is a good compromise, they can might be able to spot treat. So instead of just blanketing the whole field, they can go to problematic, problematic areas and just spot treat those areas. It's not 100% perfect, but it's a lot better than where you are now. Well, again, what I'm saying is I'm not sure if there's anyone that's actually pro-pesticide here. I'm not sure there's anyone that's actually arguing the other side. Okay. No, I, I, I'm you'd not, be surprised. Listen, I think, I think that's an intriguing idea, Martella. And I think it's, it's an idea that's growing out of the brochure that mm -hmm. we're working on. I would love to see, and I think we probably would agree that it would be so cool to have the alternative field to, to demonstrate how an organic approach or a natural, just a natural field, I, whatever, whatever language we would use. I, I love the idea. I don't know how we would implement that, but I would love to see us eventually move to something like that. What do you guys think? I think it's a great idea. I think the problem is the fields are booked, completely booked to take one out. Right. 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 But it's not going to be organic overnight. Not overnight. Years. Well, yeah, it might take years. Yeah, you're right. Okay, so what we have. The only thing I would say is I've tried to do this on my own lawn, and the organic alternatives typically are much more expensive. Yeah. And typically don't work as well. I mean, right. I'll tell you right. I've tried. I really tried. Mm -hmm. It's it's hard. Yeah, well, I have. It's around. They're paying for that use, and it's their. They're setting up the structure, whether we like it or not. They're setting the structure, but but they require. I mean, I, I think we need to do a little more investigation about about what, what the contract requires, who the vendor is, and so on. And so on. I mean, I think I think we need to. Well, I think we're the vendor. We straighten what field. Yes, we do. We have our own contract getting certified. Oh, um, we do. Right. Okay. We can house. Yeah, we have we okay. supply labor and vendor. Yeah, I think I, I think Jim's right. A discussion with them about what the standard is that is to be met and whether that standard can be met without the pesticides. So for instance, there may be a higher percentage of clover in the field. Does that still meet the standard that the contract specifies? And if it does, then you know the pesticides kill clover, but if you don't spray pesticides, then clover grows. Well, what's the problem with that? I mean, is that a problem to the contract? Well, I, I, think, I think we're gonna to have to pump this discussion to Parks and Rec with some I think here of us actually. perhaps present, yeah. it might be, a, a, I, I mean, we're not gonna solve this issue. No. What yeah. we can do is finish our brochure. But we could suggest, we could follow this intriguing idea that Marcello just brought up and discuss, and, discuss it with Parks and Rec. What do you think? Um, I think it's a, it's well, it's, it's a, a good idea, I think. Where Karen will go with this is EAC willing to put their budget towards that project? Oh, good question. I have a suggestion. I mean, rather than actually getting an entire field, isn't there somebody's lawn somewhere that is treated organically that images could be taken and show the difference rather than having to actually can pay the expense of converting a field? I would think that there would be some resource around where somebody has treated their property organically and they'd be able to see pesticides. I'm sorry. My lawn has no pesticides on it. Never. Well, have. That's what I'm saying. Somebody has treated their lawn in a way that we might be advocating for that. We could do close up images and show the difference and, and get some sort of input that way. I don't know that we need to do an entire field in order to prove the point and go to that expense. I think there's a way around that. If, well, our, maybe a, if our goal is to educate, if our goal is to educate residents about alternative ways to, to, to work with a lawn, then we have we have to we have to decide what that's going to be. Um, and Karen, thank you for that idea. Is this part of the brochure? Is there is there a way in the brochure that we're already creating? To point, to point to a place for people to see and walk on 
Uh, so let's be on the scope of this group. Alternatives. I'm like, sorry. I, I, I can I can give some suggestions of alternatives, but that's too much for this brochure. It's a very small brochure. There's a lot of information in here already. Um, so I don't think that's a, a wise idea. I think that would be overwhelming. But I certainly can get some examples and suggestions of where to get more information on how to do it on this bond. I have not put that in here yet. Yeah. So there so on this brochure we can have um some example or some suggestions of where to get organic information. Okay, so we, all right, so we can add that. We'll do that. Um, we better roll on. We should move on. Yeah, we have to move on. But uh, we have uh, some very interesting suggestions here, and perhaps at some point we'll have a demonstration area or a lawn or something that we can point to. I don't know how we're going to do that. Okay, okay. Maybe a vendor, sorry, maybe last thing, maybe a vendor will do it for free at a low cost with the opportunity to advertise. You know, hey, I treated this field at low cost or for free. Can I just advertise my organic lawn service or whatever through the field? Maybe that would be fair. Marcella, could you look into that for us? Is there a way to? Yeah, can absolutely. I'm more than happy to. Indigenous Ingenuities would be would be a great company. resource. I'll reach out to them. That. There's a few. Uh, there's a few organic lawn care companies I'm familiar with. I'll, I'll try them and see if they be open to that. Or maybe. Right. Really great information, Marcello. Thank you. Yeah, no it's okay. also possible that they have a contract with some other township or some other sports facility that already mm -hmm. is using them, and that would be an opportunity to be able to show the difference as well. True. Okay. We'll, we'll, we'll look at that again in June, then. and we'll see if we, we'll see if we have more information. Thank you. Now we're watching the time, as always. So let's move on here. Let's decide who's sure anything else, Heidi. How would you guys think? What was the thought about it overall? I like the whole review. I, I think it's very heavy. It, it, it's kind of it's kind of a downer. It's it's actually frightening to be honest. Maybe maybe that's the intent to be frightening, but it, it's to me it's a little bit off putting. I wonder if we could not make it quite so so cool <laughs> I, I I would prefer to have a little more. Of, here's what you can do as opposed to. Run away, run away. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think, I um, yeah. Is that far enough? Well, but you know, here's here are products, here are services, here are things you can do okay. to get you there, as opposed to you know, don't use these chemicals. You're gonna die. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Embrace the analyze. People may not. Uh, yeah. 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 yeah, we don't embrace the analyze. Okay, that's like we, we dig them out. Okay, yeah, 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 we don't spray them. Of course, we get back in there. We dig them out, but you know that that kind of thing. So I, you know, I think you know a, a box of here's where to go to implement this, as opposed to okay. be be afraid, be very afraid. Some scare, <laughs> but also some encouragement. Yeah. All right. Okay. Can you can you scan it somehow and send it through email so we can see it? Of course, I'll get back to you. I, I can email it to you. Great. Maybe everybody would like to see it or not. Yeah, that might be good. Let's share it. Okay. Yeah. Then we'll put that up. We'll look at yeah. it again in June. Okay, moving on. Uh, there, there, the Bucks County Planning Commission Citizen Advisory Design Committee. This is such a, 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 a long title. About the Neshaminy Greenway Trail Segment 2 Dark Hollow Park was held April 15th. Kurt and I both attended that meeting. And uh, uh, I think at this point, all we can say is that there, it, 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 and it's a win. We had a win about, about that. Here's the win, as far as we're concerned, as environmentalists. The Bucks County commissioners are paying for uh, an environmental study. Environmental yeah. and, and, and they're using a, a uh, a, a person recommended by the uh, Bucks County Conservation District. And so we feel that that is a win. There won't be any more meetings until that study is completed. But as far as today goes, that uh, two mile stretch of the Neshaminy Greenway Trail along the Neshaminy that was proposed is now on hold with an alternative idea, which is a seven tenths of a mile loop trail, which is entirely in Warwick Township off Valley Road. That's where we are right now. 
and the study will be done, and then we'll continue our discussion. There is a, a real interest in bike and hike trails, and we're not against trails. We need to say that. What we are against is building a 10 feet wide asphalt trail that has such a heavy environmental footprint that it's disruptive. So that's where we are. Is that a pretty yeah, good summary? I think it's right. I'd be surprised if we were kind of backwards in this, where there's been so much discussion of putting on all this pavement before they ever came around to the idea of, well, we probably ought to get an environmental assessment. <laughs> It just seemed like, wow, why have we spent all of our time talking about this and you're just going to go get the assessment? But, yeah. you know, we're at the right place. It just seemed a strange way to get there. Yeah, it, does, it did seem a strange way to get there. So, but that's where we are right now. Good. We're feeling okay about it right now. Um, moving along. Oh, we, I, the, I guess, I guess uh, it's a new tree zone. What about it, Aaron? Does Park and Rec like our recommendations about the placement of the tree signs or not? So in terms of the two that we have made up, um, the Park and Rec's board um, unanimously agreed to defer that decision of placement to Karen and the township staff. Um, so that discussion has not happened within the township yet. I you know that it probably does not meet where you want it to be placed. Very no more area. Yeah. Deliberately. Yeah. Yeah. We go there to go. So that's where it is right now. Okay. Um, so are, are they going to include us in any further discussion or are they simply going to put the sign where they want them? I don't have a full. Because the park board just met, you know, right before this meeting, I don't have a full picture yet of, of, of how Karen and really wants to go forward with that and what she's thinking of it. Um, I would be, it's hard for me to imagine Karen unilaterally deciding on a location for that without having a discussion before. Right. Um, but I just do not know that. Um, okay, well, I'd like to request that uh, the EAC is included in, in the discussion about the, the sign placement for those two tree signs. Yeah, I'll make that up. Thank you. And we did make the recommendation. And we were asked to, we did. Yeah, yeah. yeah we did. We, and we did it properly. So we'd like to have the signs up and we've got them, yeah. Are they here? They are here. They're here. Should we see yeah, everybody go up? All right, so I, I would, would, we would like to be included. Okay. okay. Thank you. Okay, bird town, Heidi. Um, two brief things. Um, we had a bird walk on, on Saturday. Um, it was Global Bird Day and my, uh, World Migra Migration Day. We had eight participants. We saw amazing birds. We saw a yellow warbler, a great fence of flycatcher, a wood thrush, northern gorilla, and a little eaglet is going great on top of the township cell tower. Oh, so, really? um, <laughs> so that was really good. It was really awesome. Mm -hmm. And thank you to Aaron for getting it out on Facebook. Told us um, that there was 460 views of that Facebook page. Oh, that's, that's great. great. So it's really getting some attention there. And then secondly, um, our Nest Watch um, Community Science Project is going strong. I have four volunteers that are monitoring 12 boxes. Um, one box, um, one of the volunteers has some bluebird babies. Oh, we have four babies that are doing Ooh. great. One of my boxes, unfortunately, was um, we found a dead bird, a, a tree swallow, and I contacted Nest Watch and it happened. And maybe the bird was injured, hitting at the window. Um, but it does happen. It was very painful to find myself um, mm -hmm. and John, but it does happen. But anyway, it's going really well. I think it's super important that we're monitoring these boxes. I think it's a responsibility that we should have when you put these boxes up to see what's going on. So anyway, that's my report. Well, I think it's great that we had some newbies. The bird walk on Saturday had some some people who were brand new yeah. to bird walk, to bird watching. And and that's that's what we would like to see more of. Do we know if the eagles are going to be back in the um, at the cell tower there by the township? They are there. They are there right now, and they have a baby. They have an eaglet. Wow, that's great. That's great. It is. Isn't it? It's yeah. really well. And then, well, as we were watching the very end, a red tail hawk actually went towards the cell tower and buzzed them, and we were like, "Oh my gosh, what's this?" You know, hawk thinking. But there's definitely you know some rival between the eagle and the red tail hawk. So it's very <laughs> interesting that they're 
interactive. It was, it was a great walk. It was super fun. And, That's um, so great. So is there one scheduled for September? Yes, it's one September. Yes. Okay. We need to get that word out. We will. Uh, you know, we, we would like to invite, you know, if anybody out there is watching, if you've never like gone bird watching with a really good birder, please join us in our next bird walk in September. It's quite exciting. It's it wonderful. It really is. And bring your kids. I'd love to see more kids involved. Thanks. I, I have a brief question. Where is the information about the bird walks posted so that people know about them? Because I, I don't know where that information is. So it was in three places. It was on our Facebook page, it was on the Park and Rec guide, and also there was a flyer put up by the Native Plant Board. Um, okay. And then we actually got two people from that flyer alone. I've seen it right there. Okay. It was in the township uh, newsletter too. I saw it there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so okay. Cool. Okay. Great. So invasive plants of the month, Heidi. Um, so this month is garlic mustard, and I'm working on it, and hope it will be out by the end of the week. Um, <laughs> Um, and also the um, uh, the archival materials that I send you down here in the archives of all the invasive plants. Did you go and see them? Yes. Okay, yes. Because as I work through camp, I get rid of them. So I just want to make sure that we're archiving them. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we could reuse those. We will. Yeah. yeah. They're, they're, I want to do a brochure of those and we'll get 24. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm not uh, trying to do 24. That's a lot so. of work for me. <laughs> when we get more, <laughs> we'll just leave it open. <laughs> no number. Heidi, if you. When we post them up on our web page, we actually save that URL. Okay. Even though it changes monthly what's up there, you can still pull up that old URL okay. and pull up the old pamphlet. Okay, wonderful. Okay. Okay. Is there a way to put like a link on our website to do that? I'm working on creating okay. a history where you can maybe okay. get an accordion underneath the, the overall where you can archive. It would be nice if someone could re refer, refer to those other pages. Yep. Okay. So, so it would be possible from the environmental link on the Doylestown Township website to, to look at the invasive plants of the month from the past? Correct. That would be really correct. Awesome. I'm working with my, one of my interns. To, to Excellent. Excellent. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you for that. Because we already have that as a backup resource and they, don't, they take up so little room. Oh, good. Wonderful. Honestly. That's great. Okay. Nice. Compared to what I'm usually <laughs> Great. Good. Okay. Next, native plant demonstration garden. On our April 24th workday, we had 23 Ooh, master nice. gardeners, seven additional volunteers for a total of 30. Wow. And in two hours, wow, did we get stuff done? Uh, yep. I mean, Dan, awesome, right? Eric, <laughs> Jim, I mean, we got so much, it was really amazing, including wood chip spreading. So, oh, that, so that the paths are more visible, so people know where we're walking. We did not walk in the potato park. Marcello, you were there. That's it right. Marcello, the son was there. Our, yeah, Jim, me. Yeah, I mean, we, and so many other people showed up. The work is great. The master gardeners are enthusiastic. Uh, they will come back. So I do it. So My son asks me every week when he can go back and help out. He had so much fun. Oh, that's cool. That's so nice. Yeah, he literally asked me, he's like, when can we go back? I'm like, sure, whenever you want. I'll show him what to call. I have to report also that the Pennsylvania Horticultural Society Gardening Contest is happening again in 2021. It will be virtual again. There will not be live judges. Therefore, they are suggesting that we start collecting photographs now. I have some, anybody else who takes pictures of the garden, we should have some kind of drop box or something for these photographs. Can we do that? Can, can we have a drop box for photographs so that when it comes time to write the application for the contest, we'll actually have everything in place? Maybe we already have a drop box. We have a drop box. We, we were using with Andrew for the native plant garden. Oh, I'm um, for sure. So we can, I can just dump them in there. Okay. okay, I have to remember how to do it. That's on you. Okay, thank you. Anybody of, else who takes pictures of plants or pictures of people or pictures? Oh, that I would think. We want people oh, working in the garden. Yeah, pictures. I got a lot of pictures of workers. That's, that's important. I think it's part of the beauty, too. Yeah. Yes. It's important to show that it truly is a community garden. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and the people will come and, yeah, what better 
Yeah. I mean, what, is, what is the criteria to win? Well, we, we, we won. Are, we've already won four years in a row. Yeah, we want to win five. So what is the criteria? Is it pictures of people working? Okay, here's how it goes. They look at these gardens, and we, we always apply in the category of community gardens. And they have the people a working is a, is a big people working would be a great part of that then. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And they look at design, they look at creativity, they look at purpose, um, they look at um, such things as um, uh, maintenance. How is it done? Do we kind do how, what materials do we use? You know, composted material, wood chips. They, those things matter. Well, we don't have a, it's not a very formal garden. So there, it's not really like a, a formal, like French layout no. sort of thing. That's no. not part of the criteria. No, it is no. not. It is not. And, and it's very clear that this is, this is, a, this is a model for residents to learn from. It's an educational garden for the community. The the garden. Yeah. yeah, so that all matters. Yeah. Uh, I'd be glad to share the criteria when it shows up again. Uh, I'll get it probably by the first, by probably sometime in June. Usually the contest ends by the end of July. You have to get, there's a, the deadline is usually like July 31st. Mm -hmm. So pretty soon the application will be, will, will come to me and I'll share it. I'd be glad to share it. I, I could use all the help I can get in filling out that application. So keep going. We're going to, we're going to go for five. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, Arbor Day. We had a nice Arbor Day. Who would like to discuss what happened on Arbor Day? That was the same day as the work day. And some of us were there. Aaron, you read the proc proclamation. Yeah, so Arbor Day was at the same time as the, uh, the work day. Um, we had about seven or eight folks help. Um, we read the proclamation. Um, it was recognized by Tree City, even though they weren't able to attend because of COVID. Um, about a uh, week before Arbor Day, we also received uh, official notification. We were again recognizing the Tree City in 2020. Um, and again, we're probably going to have an additional uh, planting uh, coordinated with Love Beautiful uh, later in the fall. This is great. And what we put in were 13 baby Eastern Red Cedars. Nice. Those are, um, they've all been flagged. The areas around them have been cleared and they are being monitored by uh, Chris and his crew to make sure that they, they take seed and continue to grow. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. It was all a success. Uh, I'm going to table the concept of the, uh, the, I'm going to table the subject of heritage trees. Someday we'll get back to that, but not tonight. We have enough on the agenda. Uh, ready for 100? Jim, Bert? So we had a, uh... Well, let's see now. If we talk about the county for just a moment. Uh, so we had a meeting, um, and some of you were there. And there you oh, you were there. Okay. Oh, um, so we had a meeting uh, with, um, which included Commissioner Harvey and Evan Stone, who's the executive director of the Lieutenant Planning Commission, talking about the county's plans for Ready for 100. And clearly, they are all in. They they really they really embrace this, uh, especially. Um, Commissioner Harvey really seems, it seems to be something that's really, really uh, strong on. Um, talked about their plans, what they want to go forward. Um, a couple of things which, uh, which caught my attention were that uh, if they're not, they're looking first and foremost at the, at the, uh, the county's own operation in terms of energy conservation. And they talked about doing an energy audit. They talked about you know, uh, considering putting solar panels on some of the facilities. And all of that's terrific. But beyond that, uh, reaching into the community, they talked about, for example, the CPACE program, which is a program which provides low interest loans to businesses to become um, energy, energy, uh, you know, being those, you know, energy efficient and uh, install solar and, and alternative energy. So that's not that's not as limited to the municipality or the county. That's actually actual businesses. This is most important. And then the um, in addition to that, they are looking at um, and in fact, it looks like Bucks County is actually leading the initiative for a, a multi-county multi power purchase agreement to buy, uh, to build and buy solar power uh, across several counties around Florida. 
Um, so they're talking to Delaware County, Chester County, Montgomery County about doing this. Um, and it's early days, but that's a huge, that would be a huge step forward. That is. Um, and so if, and if those would be for the county facilities, I understand it, but if they produce enough capacity and they could also sell power to municipalities. Right. Yeah. Jim, can I just mention that the meeting was really impressive because they used the term utility scale yeah. solar panels. And that's yeah. right. That's yeah. a big word. Well, and and the, the key also from my perspective is they were going to use the power purchase agreement to actually implement a new solar array as opposed to just we'll buy it from somebody. Right. 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 So this, you knew that you were going to get a utility scale implementation somewhere locally out of this power purchase agreement. So that that to me meets one of the key criteria of, the, of power purchase agreements is that it actually motivates the production of new solar capacity. Yeah. Because many of the, I always feel like we're just moving the, the, the pee around into the cups. Um, but this one was clear. He was, he was gonna use this power, he was gonna aggregate demand through this power purchase agreement and then use that to get the, the solar array put in. So I thought that was terrific. Yeah. I think it also really answered the question of when they when they did their ready for 100, did they mean it to be broad scale or just their own little stuff? They clearly mean it to be broad scale. Yeah. When you think about the first time we discussed ready for 100, maybe three years ago, mm -hmm. I don't think we envisioned this happening. Mm -hmm. You were talking about getting together with a few municipalities. Now that this has become a countywide and maybe even a regional effort, it's big, it could succeed. I think we need to be optimistic. It's all good. It's all good. Awesome. It's yeah, awesome. You also put a lot of emphasis on the model ordinance so that mm -hmm. there would be uh, a clarity for builders that because everything is so cut up by, by township and borough mm -hmm. in this area, I mean, literally you go three blocks over and all of a sudden you're, you're under different rules. Right. And if there is a widespread adoption of that model ordinance, then you've got some clarity for builders that, hey, this is the way it's gonna be. And it doesn't matter if you go over there or go over here by a half mile and you buy some property, that's what it's gonna be. So just one more thing to, I just want to say to Dan as one of our supervisors. Wow, what if Doylestown Township Direct Center became a, a, like a, you know, a, a, one of the first to adopt some of the model ordinance ideas about ready for 100 and sustainable building practices. Just a note. Look, I wanted to see the township building that way, so you're not going to have an argument for me on that. But, but things have changed. You know, when you hear about the way the way the county is moving, it's different now mm -hmm. from when the township building was being planned. Yeah. So I think we have we, we can be a, maybe we can be a little bit more optimistic. I don't know. But yeah, I, and I, look, I there's a lot's changed from since when it was planned when. People were telling us like, oh, well, solar is not cost effective to go on the township building. It was apparently the reason we never got it, which um, I'm still skeptical of that. But that argument doesn't hold as much water now. Yeah. Well, let's be let's be uh, let's let's be a little more forceful this time, because I think there's more. I, th I think there's more will. Maybe there's more political will yeah. now yeah. than five years ago. And the last time I checked, uh, the township building has a gigantic flat roof that is south facing. It does, exactly. It does. It, yep. <laughs> With yep. no trees they in the way. Yeah. Okay, guys. Last item. Last Wait, item. Did you finish uh, that? I think that's I think that's the, the bulk of the discussion. I did like the one point that somebody made. I think it was maybe the um, guy um, that they're looking into paying farmers to make their field solar rather than frack. Rather than frack. Yeah. Fracking. Yeah. 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 They would lease, lease they would lease, lease farmers could lease their land for windmills rather than for fracking. Who's, who, I missed the beginning of that. Who was saying that? Um the one of I, I can't remember was it Bob Harvey? I think it was about Harvey, I can't remember. Um, or was it uh, somebody, yeah, somebody, somebody raised somebody the idea. Yeah. I came into that meeting a little bit later. Yeah. yeah. 
somebody raised said that they we want to incentivize farmers to lease their land for renewable energy right. rather than for well, fracking. Isn't that that's a huge political change? It's a sea change. It really well, 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 hold on a second. Nothing stays free. <laughs> I know, but, but, I, yeah. but if we get somebody thinking about yeah, yeah. it, the first thing is the idea. Yeah. 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 Well, and, and it's happening in other places. Yes. That's the thing. It may be new to us, right? In yeah, this local yeah, area. Right, right. But you know, you go into West Texas, there's windmills all over the place yeah. where farmers have leased their land because that's the most productive use for them mm -hmm. out there. I mean, this. this, this there's no, you don't have to go and be a, an evangelist for environmentalism when you try to farmers. You just have to offer them money that's more than they can make. Them. Right, and right. It's really so, and so these opportunities are there, but you know, people are now focusing on it. Let's let's think about this and, and do this. And in Bucks County, Pennsylvania, if those words have come out of the commissioner's mouth, exactly. Yeah, something is changing. There's something new in your hope, bro. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully. We have, we have okay. a good election in, you know, in 2020. I guess yes, please change. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, gang, I'm going to ask us to wrap it up by taking one quick look at the idea of the EA Summit at the, in the second half of October. Here's why. I've been in touch with Eric Allen from Solbury Township. Um, the end of the late October would work for Solbury Township. I think that's a good idea. Okay, and, and, and focusing on deer will yeah. also work very much. They have not yet received the full report on their deer inventory, but of course it will be available by then. Um, if we have other focus ideas, we should bring them up, but deer could, I think we've agreed that deer will be a, a good focus point for the EAC summit. So, I'm sorry, you're, you're suggesting this would be a joint summit between Solbury and Doylestown? Yes, yes, a joint summit. And um, if, if we look at if we look at the uh, EAC summit planning process in June, uh, we, we should set a date, a time, a venue. So next month, we need to figure out you know who's going to be involved in, in, in what ways, uh, who will moderate, and some of the other things on our plan. So in June, we've got to nail down that summit, but late October. Are you thinking hybrid meetings? Uh, you know what? Well, I hope by then. Maybe. I mean, we'll just we have to be open, I think. Well, yeah. and and just a, a thought starter on that. It, it does seem like, and, and we've been talking about this with other groups, that the hybrid format enables us to have more reach. Oh, you're right. You're right. And so yeah. you, know, you can you can have a gathering and you can have stuff that hand out and that kind of thing, but but you've got more reach if you're doing the hybrid meeting. Yeah, and that's good you point. can reach out and yeah. and, and we have a bunch of people here tonight because of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Great corner of the meeting. Kurt, and can you go to some of my other boards and commissions? Or me go and sell that to some of the other boards and commissions. I'd be happy to. What do you mean there? That's Let's let's go with it. I mean, that's 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 really important, and we will get more participation as we've that's noticed different. with other other uh, with other groups that we might be involved in. Okay, last call then for other issues. And um, I just I'm sorry, but I'm not going to be at the screen meeting. That's my birthday. It's, it's, it wasn't an MD zero. I know really I can't birthday. believe I'm going to be thirty <laughs> uh, again and again. And again. <laughs> Um, but my husband booked us a little trip away. It's gonna be the first tour. Oh, that's great. Um, so I'm sorry, but I will not. I will be this. However, uh, when you get the agenda and you have, if you have something burning to say, I will forward it to you. Make sure I do. I will. Okay. Anybody else? Last call for any additional ideas or issues. Motion to adjourn. Second. Thank you, everybody, for, for coming. Thank you, everybody. Bye, everybody. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Good night.